So an introduction to CSS. This is probably my favorite part of web development. CSS has come so far in the last 10 years, it's hard to imagine where we were 10 years ago and what we can do today. So what is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS formats how the HTML elements are to be displayed in the browser window, on a printed surface, or on other media devices. With all the additions to CSS, I mean, this is how we build responsive websites, this is how we style our navigation bars, everything basically now for actual layout itself and for presentation is done through CSS. It is extremely cool. There's a lot to it, not hard to use, it's hard to master. There is a lot to CSS. If the pages are structured properly, CSS can save the developer a lot of work in laying out his pages. If he actually sets up his CSS files correctly, you can design one set of CSS rules and it can pertain to tens of thousands of HTML pages. And you'll see what I mean as we set this up. External style sheets are used to store your CSS files. That's not the only way that we can style but it is the best practice way for styling style sheets. There's actually a new way that we're actually starting to use called importing style sheets, and you'll see that in the presentation. But as of this recording, external style sheets are the preferred way to store and use your CSS files. There are four methods to styling using CSS. We can link to a separate CSS file, and again, this is the most popular way to style your documents. It's the most popular method of attaching CSS rules to an HTML document. It's done through a link tag in the head section of the HTML document. The file is read into the HTML document as the document is loaded. It's the preferred way to do this, and you're actually gonna see us do this throughout this demonstration. This is what we're gonna do inside of our CSS file. We also have embedding CSS into HTML. You can actually embed CSS rules into the head section of an HTML document. You do this using what's called the style tag in HTML, and you position those tags inside the head section of your document. This practice is not used often. It's not considered a best practice as the styles will only pertain to that particular page, but it is still occasionally used. And it's actually not bad practice either. If you've got one page that's very unique to your website, there's nothing wrong with adding a couple styles in the head section of that particular document. Because if the head section styles are read into the document, they actually will overwrite the external styles because there's actually an order of precedence for these styles. It's external, it's embedded, then it's inline, which we're gonna talk about next. The inline styles can be added to any HTML element. They're actually added to the tag itself. To imp implement this, you simply use the style attribute to the element and enter your style rules as the values. Not a good way to style your pages as it adds excessive bloat to the page itself and each element needing styles is styled individually this way. It's a really, really poor way to style your sheets. It is not a best practice. It's frowned upon by most serious developers. If you see people that are using inline styles, they really don't know what they're doing when they're styling their web pages. Inline styles are frowned upon. They add to the loading time of the page. It's very hard to keep the pages updated. No one that knows what they're doing in web development is using inline styling anymore. It was popular about 10 years ago because, again, that's one of the few ways we had to style, but it's not popular at all anymore, and most professional web developers will not use inline styling. The next one is importing a CSS file from within CSS. This is becoming more popular. It's been around for a little while. Most serious web developers have only been using it probably for the last couple of years, but you can actually import a style sheet with a style sheet. This method is becoming more popular as sites become more complex. In other words, we're going to see more and more sites that have more and more style sheets that are part of them. And it's not unusual to see a CSS file bring in a small portion of another CSS file for that particular page. To import a CSS file into an existing file, we simply add the following sp statement into the current CSS file. And that's we use the and sign import, and then we give a complete path to that CSS file. Again, it's not real popular, but it is gaining popularity. It does follow best practices. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using this if you want to use it. It is kind of leading edge, so there are some browsers that have a little problem with the import statement still, but if you want to try it, you most certainly may. 
A CSS rule consists of a selector and a declaration block. This is what a CSS rule is going to look like in our text editor. We actually have the selector, which tells us what we're styling, in this case, the H1. Then we have the properties. In this particular instance, I'm using two properties. I'm using the color and the font size. So I'm actually styling the color of all the H1s, and I'm styling the font size of all the H1s. And then I'm giving them a value. That pound FFC is a hexadecimal value for a color inside HTML. There are color charts all over the web if you want to get your color charts available for HTML. And you'll notice I got the font size set to 16 pixels. So that's our value. I want you to notice that each declaration has a colon and a semicolon. And it's enclosed in opening and closing curly braces. They're separated by colon, so each property and value is separated by a colon and they end with a semicolon. So you'll notice that each property and value is ending with a semicolon separated by a colon. That's one particular style. This would be the second style for that particular H1 element. How I enter CSS in my external style sheets. I normally enter them like this. I've got the selector that I'm using. Oops. I've got my selector. Then I have my opening curly brace and on one line I'll put one property and value. The next line, another property and value, then I'll close my curly brace. You can put them all in one line if you want. To me, it looks a little confusing since HTML does ignore white space. Having white space separating these really doesn't add to the size of the file. But I tend to keep them on separate lines just because, in my opinion, it's easier to read. I still have my colon separating the property and value and my semicolon ending that statement. So it's very important that you remember that. So now let's begin development and begin styling our pages. All right, so let's go ahead and drop out of our presentation and get into our development environment. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new file. So in your text editor, go into File, New, and we actually wanna create a brand new file. And this is gonna be a CSS file. And I wanna do a save. I'm gonna save this file as main.css. And again, this is gonna be in the same directory as your index.html file. I'm just gonna call this main.css and save that. This is going to become our styling file for our web pages. We're also going to need to add a link to the head section of our HTML document. All right, so I'm going to want you to go back to the index.html file, and I want to add a line of code to the head section of that document. Right underneath our title, you'll notice I've got a link tag with a relationship or REL attribute of style sheet and my href is main.css, and this is relating to that new file that we just created, that main.css file. Now, as I do with all my CSS files, I'm actually gonna add a couple of notes. So at the very top of that CSS file, I'm gonna add a note to the file, and it just lets me know what I developed this file for, and usually the date that I de uh, developed it. And you'll notice I'm starting those with a forward slash star or asterisk. This is a sample file used in our introduction HTML CSS course, and then again, I've got the asterisk forward slash to end that comment, and I'm starting a new comment on target HTML5, September 2016. And that just actually tells me what I developed this file for. I'm going to go ahead and save that change. And by the way, if we were to refresh our browser, there's going to be no changes, even though we've linked that file, because we haven't added any styles yet. The first thing I want to do is I want to perform what's called a CSS reset to set everything to known starting positions. This is very common when we're developing style sheets. It's gonna be a very simple CSS reset that I've written for this particular training class. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this so you don't have to watch me type it. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say on target HTML5 simple CSS reset. This is kind of a mini reset. And I'm taking the tags that I'm using and I'm gonna remove all the margins and padding that are built into the browser same thing with my H1 through H6 and paragraph headings. I'm going to set the font weight to normal so nothing's bold. And I'm actually going to take all the borders away from the image. We use CSS resets quite often as we're developing our web pages. And again, this takes all of our browsers, whether it's Internet Explorer, Opera, Google, Firefox, whatever browser we happen to be using, and resets all their default styling back to a known starting position. Much of them can be much, or many of them can be much more complicated than this, but because these are the only tags we're actually going to be looking at as we set this up, I figured I'd keep it a very, very simple reset. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. This is a great time for you to pause to put these into your main.css file. 
I'm going to go back into our browser now and refresh the browser window. Let's make sure everything is saved first. Refresh our browser window. And you'll notice that everything kind of shifted over because we took out all the margins and padding from this particular browser reset. So we've got everything reset now to the way it needs to be. All right, so now we can actually start setting up the styling for our page itself. We'll be dealing with many classes and a couple of IDs as we work through these exercises. So let me quickly talk about what classes and IDs are in CSS. So IDs are unique. In CSS, IDs begin with the pound symbol. Each element can only have one ID, so we can only have one ID per element, and each page can only have one element with that ID. In other words, IDs are unique to each page inside of HTML. When I first started learning about classes and IDs, I heard over and over again that you should only use IDs once, but you can use classes over and over. And it was kind of confusing. I wasn't quite certain as to why. It basically went in one ear and out the other because it sounded more like a good rule of thumb to me rather than an extremely important aspect. But it is extremely important. If you're purely, purely an HTML and CSS person, this attitude can persist because to you, they really don't seem to do anything different. But there's definite differences between classes and IDs, especially if you get into JavaScript programming. IDs are used a lot in JavaScript and that's one of the reasons why they're unique to each page. We can only have one element with a particular ID on a page, and that ID can only be unique to that page. Classes, on the other hand, they're not unique to elements or IDs, and they can be used over and over again. And we do a lot of this in CSS. We use classes for a lot of different things, and you're going to see that as we go through this demonstration. So classes are not unique. You can use the same class on multiple elements, which we'll do. You can use multiple classes on the same element, which we're also going to do. Any styling information that needs to be applied to multiple objects on a page should be done with a class because it saves you a lot of time. So the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and go to our opening div. This div cave that we put in the very beginning, I said that we're actually going to give this an ID and we're going to, we're going to give it an ID. So I'm going to put an ID equals and in quotation marks, I'm going to say container. So now I've assigned that div an ID. That name, that ID name container has got to be unique to this page. It can't be reused anywhere else on this particular HTML page. Now to show you how we style that, I'm going to go back to my main.css file. Great time to pause if you need to type in that ID for that opening div. I'm going to go back to my CSS file and I'm actually going to put a note in here. This is actually going to start my homepage style. So I'm going to type in homepage styles. These notes may not seem important as we're working through this exercise because this is a rather small example of HTML and CSS, but there are times when your CSS files will become thousands of lines long, and it's a good idea to actually group your styles into particular areas of the CSS file. It makes them easier to find. All right, so I, wanna, I, I want to target this container ID that we just set up. So I'm going to go into my CSS file. I'm going to use that pound symbol because that's how we target an ID. I'm going to say container, then I'm going to open and close my curly braces, just like we did in the presentation. And I'm going to give it a width of 85%. So it's going to be 85%. The container itself is going to be 85% of its parent element. And in this case, the parent element is the body tag, because that's what actually holds this div ID or this div. So it's going to be 85% of that body element, which is going to be 85% of our browser window. And you'll see why I used 85% as we work through this, because it makes it a lot more responsive. I'm going to give it a background color or a background. I'm going to end that with my colon and I'm going to give it a hexadecimal value of EEE, which is a very light gray. And then I'm going to give it a margin. And I'm going to set the margin zero top and bottom because the first value is the top and bottom. The second value is left and right. I'm going to say auto left and right. And what that's going to do, it's going to center that container regardless of the size of the browser window. It's going to make it 85% of the window and center it from right to left inside that window. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. Good time to pause if you need to type those in. Now when I refresh our browser window, you'll notice we've got the light gray background it's 85% of the browser width, and it is responsive. It's going to change sizes 
as we change sizes. Don't worry about that graphic. We'll deal with that in a minute. And you'll notice now we've got that nice light gray background. And in the next lesson, we're actually going to continue working by adding more styles as we set up our home page. All right, so we've actually got that first grouping of styles. We've got our CSS reset completed, and we've actually started styling the container. And in the next exercise, we're going to start working with those images on our home page.